What's up everyone? Today we're going to be looking at the JP11 7 string from Music Man versus the LPM7 from Kiesel. Okay, so starting off with the JP11 string. So I'm just gonna start off up here, make my way down, and kind of compare the two as I go, and then I'll do the same thing with the LPM7. So, on this guitar, starting up here, we have shallow locking tuners, um, and now Kiesel also comes with the locking tuners, they're Kiesel made, and to my recognition, they both stay in tune just as well, they both work just as well, never had a problem with either of them, although in terms of customization, obviously with Kiesel, you can do whatever you want with them. So these ones, obviously, they come with chrome with the perloid buttons, which is really nice, but if you don't like that and you want to get, say, black with perloid, if you want to get gold, if you want to get any combination of those, you can do that with Kiesel versus with Music Man. You kind of have to roll with whatever model that has on it. Like, if you want black hardware, you're kind of limited because not all of the models have black hardware. In fact, most of them don't. So that kind of limits you. That's one of the great things about Kiesel. Um, but if you like these, 
you know, no problem. So anyways, working our way down. So these have stainless steel medium jumbo frets. So stainless steel, obviously a very good thing. You, you're gonna want stainless steel frets on your guitar. I'm not sure why more companies aren't doing that. More do it now, and I think more are gonna do it further on in the future, but for now, not everybody does it. But stainless steel frets last for a very, very, very long time. So you're gonna to want to find a guitar that has that. Now these are medium jumbo. Now for me personally, I prefer jumbo frets. And if you're like me, then that's kind of a problem with Music Man because pretty much all of the JPs and um, Majesties, they all have medium jumbo frets. Now to my knowledge, the only John Bertucci guitar that doesn't have um, medium jumbo and actually has jumbo frets is the JPX. Um, and now I don't even know if they make those anymore. And if you don't like sparkly purple, then that's a problem because that's the only finish that those came in, as far as I know as well. So, and obviously with Kiesel, you can put whatever kind of frets you want on there. You can put jumbo, medium jumbo. There's probably other options as well. You can put gold frets on there too, if you want. So there's much more customization there. And um, you know, for me, I like the jumbo frets. So that's a bit of a problem for me, but it's nothing you can't get used to. But if you're picky like I am, keep that in mind. Now, in terms of the fretboard, this has an ebony fretboard. That's my favorite material, so not a problem. Obviously, Kiesel also comes with um, ebony. Now, they also do pale moon ebony. You can choose any kind of fretboard you want with them. With these, again, you're kind of stuck with, with whichever fretboard comes on that model, so keep that in mind, too. In terms of inlays, these come with your standard JP inlays. Um, this one comes with a BFR one because it was made when they were still doing that. Now, with the Kiesel, you can customize them. You can put different types of material. You can put abalone. You can put regular perloid. You can put glow in the dark. You can do colored ones. With these, you're kind of stuck with that. So, you know, they look nice, so nothing wrong with them. But if you really dig the customization, Kiesel is going to be your option. Um, in terms of the neck, again, this comes with just the neck that it comes with. Now it's a very well made neck and it feels really nice. It's nice and thin. You can play super fast on it. But with Kiesel you have more customization. You can get a regular one, thicker one, or thinner one. So you have options there. Now going down here, one of the things that's really nice about this guitar that the Kiesel does not have is you can adjust the truss rod from down here. It has a little wheel. Um, Kiesel doesn't do that. Now obviously it's, Kiesel makes pretty good necks, so you don't have to adjust it that often, but when you do, it's just nice to have it down here, so that's one for Music Man. Another one that Music Man wins is that it has its piezo switch up here. I love this because, as John Bertucci will tell you in his demo videos, when he brings his hand up and down, it kind of hits the spot perfectly. It goes right there. Um, Kiesel won't do that for you, as far as I know. I've asked them if they'll do that and they put their piezo switches usually right here, which you'll see in a minute with the Kiesel, um, which isn't usually much of a problem. It's pretty easy to just kind of flick it up with your pinky, but I just really like having it up here. Um, now again with the JPs, you're kind of, you're stuck with this control layout. Now it's my favorite layout, so that's perfect for me, but if you want to have a different layout, if you want to have a, you know, a blade switch instead of a toggle switch, you're going to have to go with Kiesel again. Um, now, these are not the stock pickups, so I'm going to skip over those. These are Seymour Duncans. These obviously come with DiMarzio stock, so we'll skip that. Um, in terms of the knobs, the knobs on here are actually really nice. They only come with the John Bertucci line. Um, they're kind of like a dome knob with uh, rubber rings around them. Now, you can order these um, and put them on your Kiesel if you want. I've actually done that. Um, so you don't need to get a JP just to get these knobs, but just another thing for it. Um, now obviously these come with uh, a sparkly black finish, they call it Onyx. I love it and I think it's very nice. Now you can get that same kind of thing with Kiesel, they have a Kiesel uh, finish called Black Magic Metallic. Looks very much like this, so either way you can't really go wrong. Um, now again with the hardware down here, it comes in chrome. With Kiesel you can kind of pick whatever you want, you can go gold, chrome, black, so you can really customize it to your liking. Um, now in terms of the bridge itself, um, the trem that Kiesel is most famous for right now is the hip shot contour. So they're both very similar, they're non-double locking floating trems. 
So I actually do prefer this one better. Now the Kiesel hip shot bridge has ball bearings on it, so it doesn't wear out like a knife edge does. However, I just like the feel of this one better, and believe it or not, I actually find that this one flutters better. I'm not sure why, because mechanically, it would only make sense that the ball bearings rock back and forth easier, but for whatever reason, these do for me, so I don't know, I can't explain that, but yeah. Um, now one thing that does kind of bug me about this guitar is that I find that the control output, the outputs right here, they're a little bit too high up. So when I like to sit in classical position, as you'll see in my videos, and this kind of gets in the way of it, I actually have to prop it up a little bit farther than I want to. Um, you can always just get angled cables, um, but this still kind of hits your leg a bit if you like to sit like I do. So it could be a problem, it could not be a problem, you know. The LPM has it a bit lower down and that's kind of perfect for me, it's right out of my way, so that's great. Um, now on the back you kind of have, very similar to the LPM, you just kind of have your battery component right here. One thing you can do with this is you can actually adjust the piezo system from right here at the back. Now, both piezo systems to me sound really good. I've never felt the need to adjust either of them, but if you want to, it's right here for you. Um, Obviously, again, this one's a bolt-on. The LPM that I'm going to show you is not a bolt-on. So in terms of fret access, I'm going to give that to the LPM because you don't have the big neck joint. Although this one is very well designed, it still is a bolt-on neck joint. The LPM doesn't have a neck joint, so it's just easier to go up on. And the cutout is a little bit deeper on the LPM7 as well, so that one goes to the LPM7. So overall, the JP11 7 string is a very well-made instrument. Um, I couldn't find any kind of problems with the fretwork on it. It's very well done. All the frets are very even. Because it's a 20-inch radius on the fretboard, you can go very low on the action, which is nice a lot of the time. Um, now, although it is very good build quality, these things are going for, I think, at least 4,000 Canadian right now, which I would never spend. I actually got this used for about half that. Um, so. Is it well made? Yes, but I wouldn't spend my money on it new. But that's just me, obviously, you know, if you really, really like these and you have the money for it, you know, go ahead, get it new. But that's just my opinion. Um, as you'll, I'll talk about this more later, but I mean, the Kiesel, you can get something very, very, very similar. You can get a guitar with a 20 inch radius, with whatever kind of frets you want, with whatever kind of headstock you want, with whatever kind of trim you want. And it's gonna be, you're gonna save at least a thousand dollars, I think. But, you know, if you're just really, really attached to these kind of guitars like I was for a while, then you know you can go with this. Okay, so on to the LPM7 from Kiesel. So, starting up here at the top like before. So, we have Kiesel locking tuners. Now that's standard on all Kiesels. They come with locking tuners regardless of whether you have a Floyd Rose or not. Um, and this one is a 3-4 headstock. I prefer that one because it's just a little bit more compact um, and I kind of like the look of that more. However, with Kiesel you can get a 7 in line, um, there's a couple different ones you can get so you can customize it whichever headstock you want. Um, and you can get them in any color you want, so you can get them black, gold, chrome, you can get them with the Proloid buttons just like the JP has, that's up to you. And then with the Kiesel logo as well, um, you can get that in a different color. So I got mine in abalone, I really like that. Um, and you can get it in perloid, you can get it in different colors, like gold, whatever you want to do, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then the color of this, the entire guitar is, is matte black. Now, I'm not going to really talk about the color because with the Kiesel, you can just get whatever color you want. You can get it in, in matte, you can get it in gloss, you can get different tops, you can get a Buckeye Burl top, if you don't mind paying an extra like 600, I think that's how much they are. Um, but I just went with the real simple matte black. I think it looks really sleek and fancy. So, so moving down, this has obviously the locking nut because it's a Floyd Rose. It's a piezo equipped Floyd Rose, so we'll talk about that after. Um, now moving down, it has jumbo stainless steel frets, which like I was saying before, that's a must for me. The difference between medium jumbo and jumbo frets I notice, and I just don't like how on medium jumbo frets your finger sometimes touches the fretboard, 
kind of rubs. I feel like it slows me down. It's probably just a mental thing for me, but still this is just more comfortable for me having just the bigger frets. And again, they're stainless steel, so these two never wear out. Um, so that's great. I um, mean, they're really smooth too when you're doing bends. It feels really good. Now, with the inlays, I went with abalone because I really like that look. You can get different kinds of inlays. You can get diamonds. You can get offset dots. You can get no inlays at all. That's up to you, which is really cool. You can customize it however you want. I got a ebony fretboard, which like I said before, that's my favorite material for fretboards. Now when I got this, they were actually giving you the opportunity to pick between a regular ebony and a dark ebony, like a blacked out ebony, which is what I went for, which I really like because if you go with a blacked out ebony, there's no streaking in it. It's just like totally blacked out, which I find a very sleek look. I really like it. Um, you don't really have that option with Music Man, whatever fretboard that guitar comes with, that's what you get. So, And then with these, you have Lumen Lay side dots. I believe that that's standard with Kiesel now. I think they do that on all their models. Um, I could be wrong, but that's what I think. Um, now with the neck profile, this is different from the JP. This one is a little bit thicker. Now with Kiesel, you can choose between regular, larger neck or thinner neck. They just either, they shave it down more or less depending on what you choose. This one is a regular one. I kind of like having a little bit more thickness. Maybe I just have bigger hands, I don't know, but I feel like you can kind of put your thumb on the back of the neck and play in classical style. A little bit easier on this one than you can on the JP. But you can get used to either of them. They're both really good, that's all preference. I don't think one is really better than the other. But material-wise, this one is far superior because this one has a five-piece neck. Now again, you can customize that. You can get a one-piece neck, you can get a five, a seven, with your Kiesel, whatever you want to do. But the other key thing about these two is that they have two graphite rods running down the neck outside of the truss rod. So you have a lot more stability with this. Even in Canada, where we have a lot of you know, humidity changes, like the winter is very, very dry here, I never really feel like I have to change this one more than a few times out of the year. Um, whereas the Music Man, because it's just one piece of mahogany, I kind of found myself changing it all the time just because I felt like it kind of moved back and forth whenever it felt like. It wasn't that bad, like it was tolerable. Plus the Music Man has a wheel adjuster down here so it's way easier to adjust it with the Music Man than it is with this because this one has a regular kind of put your Allen key in from the top and crank it around. Um, but you know, either one really works. Um, I just find this one a bit more stable just because of how it's built. I think it's built a little bit better. But, you know, you can get it however you want to get it with Kiesel. Now, moving down, um, the pickups that um, are notorious with Kiesel right now are the Lithium pickups, Kiesel Lithium, Neck and Bridge. And these are my favorite pickups, actually, because they are so clear. Um, I like to play high gain a lot, um, and they just cut through so well while still sounding super aggressive. Um, so I really like them. Um, my second favorite would probably be the John Bertucci DiMarzios. Those are also really, really good. But if I were to pick one, I think I would pick these. They just There's something about them that's just really great. Um, now the body on this, this is actually a slightly outdated version of the Kiesel double cut guitar. Um, as of a couple of years ago, they kind of did like a facelift to it. They, they lengthened the horn on the top, so the horn is a bit longer. This horn is cut down a bit more, so you got a little bit more access to the frets. And the body is just kind of shortened a little bit. It's like a little bit smaller. Um, I actually do prefer the look of the new one. And I think that having the extra bit of cutaway here on the new model would be better. But this one serves its purpose just fine. It's balanced. And the cutaway goes beyond the 24th fret down here. So you never really have a problem with accessing. And this model is neck through. So it's a lot better than the JP that has that kind of big bulky neck joint, which doesn't bother a lot of people, but to me, because I'm used to something like this, it does bother me, so I prefer this, personally. Um, again, with this, you can kind of customize, you can get bevels, which I did on the top and bottom here, or you can not get bevels, totally up to you. I kind of like it, um, gives it a bit more of a 3D look. 
Um, and that's one thing that I do like on the JP more. The JP has bevels going all the way around the body. Whereas this, if you do get the bevel option, you just have two. You just have one up here, you have one down here. And that's it. So on the JP, I do like that 3D look of having bevels all the way around. Um, but this one is fine too. Now, on to the bridge. So this is the most important deciding factor between the two for me. Um, I have found that floating trims that are not double locking, like the John Bertrucci one has, they never stay in tune as well as these do. Um, now I've heard Guthrie Govan talk about this. If you ever look at a Guthrie Govan signature Charvel, he uses an old style Floyd Rose, and by that I mean there's no fine tuners, but the string locks in the bridge and then goes up past a regular nut into fine into locking tuners. And his reasoning for that is because when you have a string come up from the behind the body like it does with a regular non-locking floating trim, it comes up from the bottom and then it kind of takes a really aggressive 90 degree angle turn up to the fretboard. So the problem with that is that whenever you do a bend, especially like a big bend, like a, a step and a half or beyond, I find that whenever you do that, that particular string always rings flat. Um, and then you have to do like a dive to reset it. Now with this, because there's, there's no angles, it's the string is cut off here and the string is cut off here, there's no potential for it to slip anywhere. So these, you can throw bends at it, you can throw as big of a bend as you want, you can be as aggressive as you want with the whammy bar. This thing does not go out of tune. Like I tune this thing after I change strings on it, and then for months I do not change the tuning. And it stays in perfect tune. Now with the JP, you really can't do that. You kind of have to tune it like, usually before you play every time, which isn't a big deal for most people, but I just, call me lazy, but I like being able to just pick up my guitar and have it in perfect tune. So with the Floyd Rose, you can do that. Um, so I, I, I much prefer this. Um, I've tried everything on the John Bertrucci model to keep it in tune as well as this. So that includes like, lubing up the nut more, I've even tried lubing up the, the saddles themselves. I've even tried putting the string in so that the, the ball end of the string is sitting in a certain position inside the bridge and nothing works as well as this does. I've taken it to techs, like really good techs, and they can't get it to work as well as it's supposed to. Like they say it stays in tune just as well as the Floyd Rose. It doesn't. That's in my experience. Um, but that's why I will always stick with the Floyd Rose. And the other benefit to these two is you just have more range. So when you pull back on it, you can go sharper. And when you pull down on it, you have more range going down too. So it's more sensitive, which I really like. With flutters, when you do a flutter, it, it goes up and down more aggressively, which I like. Um, again, that's all preference. If you like a non-locking trem, which I find most people do these days, and you like it, just go with that, you know? But for me, Floyd Rose have always been the most reliable bridge that I've ever used. So I'm gonna stick with these. Now this one is especially cool because it has a piezo in it, um, which is what drew me to Kiesel the whole time. They will put you, they will build you a piezo with your Floyd Rose, um, which is very rare. Most companies don't do that. It's pretty hard to find a company to build your guitar like that. Um, and then the other thing too is that this comes with a control layout that's just like the JP, which is my favorite control layout. So it comes with the control knob here, volume, tone, and then volume for your piezo. Now the only difference between this and the JP is that the JP has the piezo switch up here, and this one has the piezo switch down behind the bridge. Either one works. I think the JP is a bit better, but you know, you don't use this nearly as often as you do like the regular toggle switch. So it works just fine. Um, everything is moved on this just a little bit further down. So if you look on the JP, the toggle switch is like a little bit farther up here and all the controls are moved up just a little bit, but it hardly makes a difference. You can still grab this with your pinky super easily, flick it up and down. 
that works great. Um, and of course, because it's a piezo, it's an active circuit, just like the Music Man, so you gotta have a 9 volt battery loaded in. Um, and as I said before, I kind of prefer having the, the outputs facing down, like how they are here. On the JP, they're kind of coming out here. So if you sit in a classical position like I do, digs into your leg, this one doesn't do that, it comes out the bottom. So when you are playing like this, like how I am now, and nothing bothers you with cables. So that's really nice. And just one more thing I wanted to mention about the neck compared between this and the Music Man. This one has a 14 inch radius and the Music Man has a 20 inch radius. Now you can get a 20 inch radius from Kiesel. Um, now unfortunately with Floyd Rose, and this is the biggest downfall for Floyd Rose if you ask me, they don't make nuts that are more than like two different radiuses. They make a, a 12 inch radius and a 15 inch radius nut, I believe. Which to me is ridiculous because one if you, what if you want to have a 20 inch radius fretboard with a Floyd Rose? Well then you're going to be stuck with a 15 inch radius nut and then it's just not going to feel right because your nut is going to be more, it's going to have a smaller radius and it's going to be more curved. So your, your strings in the middle are going to be higher above the frets than your outside strings are. So Kiesel had, had actually offered to make this for me with the 20 inch radius, but they said, you know, beware, it's not really going to feel right because your middle strings are going to be higher, so I decided not to. So I decided to go with the 14 inch radius because it fits a lot better with the radius of the Floyd Rose. Now I do prefer 20 inch radius a bit more, but it's nothing you can't really get used to. The 14 inch radius, you can still get really low action. So I've never really had a problem with that. One thing I would change about this is that the E string, the high E string, it's a little bit close to the edge of the fretboard. Um, so sometimes I do find myself slipping off of the end. Um, that happens on the Music Man 2 as well. Um, but this one a little bit more, just because it is a 14 inch radius and because there's a bit more curvature, you, you slide off a bit easier, I find. Um, but it still feels really nice. I don't even notice that much of a difference between a 14 and a 20. And like I said, you can still get your action really low with a 14 inch radius, but just kind of a shame that Floyd Rose doesn't make their parts to adapt to different radiuses better. I, I don't understand why they don't do that. Um, but it still works. So in conclusion, would I go with a LPM7 or a JP11 7 string? So I would definitely go with the LPM7. Now there's a few reasons for that. First off being the price, you can get something built from Kiesel that is so much like a JP11, but it's so much cheaper. You're going to save at least a $1,000, um, in my case more. Then again, that is Canadian, so it might be different American or European, I'm really not sure. But in my case, the Kiesel was definitely the best option in terms of price. The next reason why I like this so much better is because of the customization. Kiesel gives you so much options to customize to your liking in terms of playability and in terms of aesthetics, which is really important. Um, so those are just two things that are really huge that I think makes Kiesel just far superior. And then the other thing too is, is in terms of stability, like you, you have the option to build a much more stable neck and that's kind of a big deal, like I've, I've said, especially for me living in a climate where it gets really dry in the winter. Um, the Music Man just doesn't handle it as well, which is kind of surprising, you would think that with a guy like John Bertucci, he tours a lot, and you would think they would build him something that's a bit more stable. I know a lot of his guitars have like roasted maple necks, which I think are probably a lot better than just a single piece of mahogany. But this is just a lot better compared to the JP11 7 string. So that's my opinion, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video.